my law and I will send arrows among them. Amen. Ecclesiastes says the congregation of sinners is like a toe heaped together. At the end of them is a flame of fire. It makes no difference how many preachers tell you that hell is not a reality. I come to tell you tonight that this Bible that we believe says John 3.16 for God so loved the world also says there is an eternal resting place to the one that is lost in eternity without God called hell. He shall be punished, Job said, for all he did and yet shall not be consumed. He will be tormented and punished but not consumed. He shall burn and every sorrow shall fall upon him. All darkness is hid in his secret place. A fire that is not kindled shall devour him. In the gospels, Jesus speaks of hell more than he does heaven. In Matthew, Jesus says, but I say unto you, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you shall be in danger of judgment. Whosoever shall say to you, fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. The Son of Man shall send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and evildoers. You better make sure who you're friends with. Are you hearing me preach? Brother James was talking last night coming down the road or the night before and he said of a preacher, of a pastor whose father was in the police force. Amen. He drove up in this pastor's yard and he, man, he got out and had a 15-year-old girl in the back seat. He got out and drugged that 15-year-old girl out of that back seat and throwed her in the front yard and said, Pastor, this is my 15-year-old daughter. Here he was, a sheriff and a, a deputy. He said, here's my 15-year-old daughter. I can't do a thing with her. He said, you got to help me. Hallelujah to God. That 15 year old girl, that pastor took her in and set her down and began to talk to her. That preacher, that man said, I don't know what happened to her. She was a good girl. She was a good girl. She was a humble girl. She was sweet. She was innocent. But then she met this friend at school. And this friend that's come on, somebody got to becoming closer to her. And the next thing you know, she got friends with two or three more and the next thing you know she didn't want to live amen we're in, in, the, in the upstairs part she wanted to make the attic her bedroom and he said I didn't think much of it he said until one day I went up there after not being up there for a while after fixing it up for her and she had dressed it in all black she knew her clothes had changed and she had begun to dress with black makeup and black amen clothes Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, I don't know what's wrong with her, but I'm telling you one good friend in junior high can, can influence your life to go down a road that you would have never went down if you, amen, could have went not to help it. But reality sits in. One phone. I've got Noah Preacher's kid right now. She was an innocent girl. All it took was one night, one boy talked her into sexting and she sent a picture of her body one time and that lustful spirit hit her and hooked her in the jaw and she went down a long long road amen of lustfulness hallelujah one sleepover can change your world this girl became friends this began to happen amen the pastor talked to the girl set her down said baby I've talked to your father but you got to tell me what happened you got to tell me what took place amen where did this come about when did you start feeling this overtake you she was possessed of the devil that girl began to talk to the preacher and begin to be honest and said I begin to do this we begin to play with Ouija boards we begin to dibble and dabble in this and they got into the satanic church are you ready for this and to blow that mind of a country preacher
preacher. Amen. That young girl said, uh, as a fact, uh, amen, we are so wrapped up in this that me and two friends of mine, you know that six-month-old baby that's been missing? She said, I can take you to where he's at. We took him, kidnapped him in the night and took him out and cut him open and ate his own organs. Uh, and she said, I can take you to the place where we have buried him. That girl, uh, come on somebody, are you hearing me preach tonight? Fifteen years old, uh, but you cannot play with eternity and sin. There's some of you under the sound of my voice in this altar last night trying to cry and pray and get the Holy Ghost. You can't get the Holy Ghost because you ain't delivered. You got to be delivered. You, there's some of you playing with lust. There's some of you playing with rebellion. There's some of you playing with a spirit of hell that's going to get a hold of your life. I can put my hand on some of you that if God does not do a miracle in this youth camp, the next year at least three of you, I feel the Holy Ghost has said to my heart, at least three of you, if you do not get delivered in this youth camp, within the next year is going to take a toll on your life. Whether it's going to intertwine you, entangle you up in its way of, or either you not even be able to be here next year because you are ready in eternity. Are you hearing me preach tonight? I come to tell you that girl begin to scream. I'm possessed of the devil. Amen. He had to turn her in of course. They found the little six month old baby baby's body. I come to tell you, you cannot play with sin. Jesus said, this is what Jesus said. Are you hearing me? Jesus said this. He said, this is how bad hell is. He said, if your hand offends you and you cannot stop sinning because of your hand, he said, take and cut it off saw your own hand off cause it would be better for you to cut your hand off and go to heaven with no hands than to go to hell with both your hands he said if your eye offends you and you cannot keep from lusting and you can't keep from looking at stuff you ought not to look he said it would be better if you took your own eyeball and plucked it out of your your head. Hallelujah. Some of you counselors may want to know where some of your kids are because some of them's probably left this building tonight because the spirit that's driving them does not want them to hear what I've got to say right here tonight. But I come to tell you reality when it finally sits in. Most of the time it is. I'm not talking to you kids. You turn around and look at me. I said the counselors, not you. Amen. I want you to understand something tonight. He said it would be better if you plucked your own eyes out of your head amen than to live and die and go into hell without or with your eyes that's how bad hell is brother Don Rich preached one time on there is no place like hell and he dealt with a man who had a disease and cancer that ate his body he pulled him up I mean just an evil disease not just cancer but something with cancer and it pulled him and made him draw up and he couldn't talk on top of that his wife left him she left him and took the kids she said I didn't marry somebody to have to take care of them in their sickness amen this man's wife left him he's dying the preacher came in to visit him amen and said to him how's your faith brother he took and wrote on a piece of paper I must keep my faith in God God, because there is no place like hell. I come to tell you tonight there is not a person in eternity tonight that would not want to trade places with any one of us in this building. If I could scare you, I'd scare you. If I could shake you, I'd shake you. I'm telling you there's some of you headed so fast to destruction. It's like a snowball going or Amen. An avalanche coming down a mountain. It seems like it's unstoppable. You seem incapable. Amen. Incapable of being stopped. But you better stop 
yourself. You better get a hold of yourself. Because when reality hits you, hey man, they end up praying, fasting, seeking the face of God that's going to turn it around. I saw the dead, great and small, in the press, stand in the presence of the throne of God. And the books were open. And he says, And them that were found in the book of life went to heaven. Them that were not found in the book of life, amen, was cast into hell. And death and hell gave up the dead that was in them. And they were cast into the lake of fire. Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Jesus could not have been more clear that each of us, by our own choices, by our own conduct, risk eternal punishment after death uh, in Luke chapter number 16 Jesus tells the parable of the rich man the Bible said he died and in hell he lifted his eyes uh, amen uh, hallelujah and the Bible said he was in torments uh, and the Bible said he said father Abraham would you send Lazarus uh, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue uh, he said no uh, because there is a gate got fixed between me and you that I cannot come to you and neither can you come to me. Oh, hear me tonight, young lady. Hear me tonight, young man, mother or father. There is a place you can get that not only God, not only even God himself can reach you. Not even God himself can pull you out. If I was battling lust, I'd lay in this floor until I got complete victory and deliverance. I wouldn't go home. You hear me, young boys. Hallelujah. You come here every year. You pray to you feel better. You pray to you think you got victory. But I'm telling you, if you pray, if you've ever prayed, you better pray this year that you go all the way through that none of that is left in you because this may be the year that it scuffs you out this may be the year that it takes you down you say I've got maybe a you know why because you've got by over and over and over again God has showed mercy over and over again but I come to tell you tonight amen that it always don't end up like that it always don't happen like that amen he says would you let me go back and tell my my brothers about hell God says to the rich man if they hear not Moses and the prophets neither would they be persuaded though one rose from the dead so guess what there's nobody coming from the grave going to preach to you tonight there's nobody going to come back and talk to you all you got is us preachers all you got is a praying mother all you got is a praying daddy all you got is a praying grandmother all you got is a praying preacher and if you don't hear us you're not going to be persuaded from one from the dead however God is merciful amen to us one young girl 1922 March 23 she dreamed of hell now I'm not telling you she saw exactly what hell is going to be like but she did dream of it and this is what she said the greatest torment in hell namely was the soul's inability to love she said one of the damned souls in hell cried this is my torture that I want to love and I cannot love there's nothing left in me but hatred and despair She said she heard one of those souls scream. The worst part of the torture is I want to love, but there's no love left in me. Nothing but eternity. Hell, hatred, bitterness. If one of us could so much as make a single act of love, but we couldn't. We just live in hatred and violence. She said, I saw several souls fall into hell. Among them was a girl of 15. And she was cursing her parents 
for not having taught her to fear God. You know what the Bible says, girls? That if I, if I as a parent don't discipline my child and whip them and drive that spirit far from them, I hate my children. Some of your mamas and daddies ain't hard on you and don't discipline you and they let you live like you want to. You hear Pastor Greg tonight. I had a mama that didn't raise me in the fear of God. I had a daddy that didn't raise me in the fear of God. But when I got born again, I taught myself. I wasn't taught to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. But I did that or I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? But I come to tell you tonight that the Bible says you to drive that spirit far from them. Why? It'd be better for them to be whipped and not go to hell than to be let to do what you want to and die lost without Jesus Christ. This young girl began to scream. Amen. Nor there, there was a hell. She said, you were, she was cursing her parents. You didn't teach me to fear God. You didn't teach me there was a hell. Her life had been a short one, she said. But it was full of sin. For she had given to end all that her body and passions demanded. In a way of satisfaction, whatever she wanted to do, she had done it. Amen. Years ago in Russia in 1812. Amen. There was an old general. An account. In Russia shortly before the horrible military campaign. Napoleon in Russia in 18. 12 two high ranking military men one of the military governor, governors of Moscow and the other was a general were scoffing over drinks and they were laughing over the existence of God am I boring you tonight amen they were laughing over the existence of God they were laughing about hell and death they made a mockery of it sitting there drinking and the governor said to the general he said I tell you what if there were a hell the first there would come to which one of you said one looked to the other and said if there's a hell and I'll get there before you I'm going to come and warn you of it are you hearing me they were laughing over drinks you can believe this or not it was written down as truth a few weeks later the general departed for the very front of the military battle one morning while the governor was lying in bed he dreamed in his dream he dreamed that the general had appeared at the foot of his bed pale and he set his face like he'd seen a ghost with his right hand on his breast he was declaring what do we do now there is a hell and I am here what do we do now he then disappeared the governor ran got up out of bed and ran wild eyed hair on the end and exclaimed what had just happened they said calm down it's just a nightmare only to find out he meant it's 1812 they didn't have phones back then only to find out two weeks later that that very general had died that very morning hallelujah amen Hallelujah. Two weeks later, hell does exist. You hear me tonight, young people. It was a group of kids sitting in a service one night, some teenagers. They were mocking and making fun. Not necessarily to be rebellious, but they were laughing. They could care less what the preacher was preaching. And all of a sudden, in their rebellion, the preacher got on to them. Amen. And all of a sudden, one of them boys in his rebellious state of mind jumped up and hollered. How far is hell, preacher? How far is hell? Amen. And them three kids got up and left that service. They took off and spent out of the parking lot their tires and raced and rushed as far and as fast as they could. Amen. To get out of there. They hadn't gone but a few yards. In the sharp of that curve, you heard them screech the tires. Hit a tree. Are you hearing me? mangled all three of them killed them instantly except for one gasping for breath you could hear it it was so loud it stopped the service the whole church jumped ran out the door and ran down the road and there they was amen lost for eternity are you hearing me that preacher counted later from that tree to the church and he said this is how far hell is 
so many hundreds of feet is how far hell is hallelujah Jordan follow along with me have some of this is on there amen how far is hell preacher I'll tell you how far hell is amen hallelujah it could be your next choice it could be your next decision it could be two months three months four months you don't need to pat a cake tonight you better get serious with God I'm telling you I've got more to preach on what I preached this week already hallelujah but I come to tell you why we fuss and fight over doctrinal issues and who we going to fellowship and not fellowship there is people dying and going to hell amen one preacher said his nephew was 16 years old and had backslid amen he was in and out he played games with God he would be in God for a while and then he would be outside he would be in church and then out of church what do you know that if you were to die in the middle of one of your spells where you're not in how many of you would say amen to me right now pastor I know what it's like I've been there I'll be in for two three months and then I'm out I'm lukewarm I'm back out into the world I'm playing games what if you died in that condition this boy was hunting on a winter morning amen and he went to get on his four wheeler and when he did the gun slipped amen he had set it nicely but it slipped and hit amen the bar when it did it went off blowed him shot him right in his belly amen he's bleeding to death his friend that was with him another teenager amen to God amen said go get help go get help and he was gasping for his breath that young boy went to get on the four wheeler when he did that 16 year old boy said amen put me on my knees put me on my knees wait 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 before you go wait before you go put me on my knees amen why did he want on his knees he said I've got to try to talk to God when they got back there was no breath in his body that boy was trying to pray one more time because it happened on a Saturday morning when youth camp wasn't happening it happened on a Saturday morning when church wasn't going on there's some of you if God doesn't take you while you're sitting on a pew you would die and go to hell there's some of you if God would don't take you at youth camp and he takes you any other time you'll die and go to hell Riley when it gets here baby it's way too late come on when it gets here reality's done set in and you're in eternity some of you ought to lift your hands and say God take me while I'm praying take me while I'm seeking you take me while I'm talking in tongues that boy said put me on my knees why I've got to talk to God and he left him in the middle of those woods while he went for help but help didn't come quick enough and he went into eternity hallelujah Woo! glory to God amen hallelujah Christopher what if he takes you in the middle of your junk Christopher's my friend he is a little boy last year that I used in the first night and we become friends he's grown up he struggled this year. But I thank God. He said, I prayed this week, Pastor. But what if the Lord, what if reality hits you while you're not in? Harry Houdini. Is anybody hearing me tonight preach? Anybody know who Harry Houdini is? You may be too young. He was an escape artist. He would be tied up. They would take him and put him in chains and he would get out of them. They would put him in a bucket of water, a tomb of water chained up and he would escape it. He was known as the escape artist. He was known for his great escapes. Amen. They would put him up, tie him up, and he would have to get untied and unchained before the gauntlet fell and cut his head off. But he would do it and the world would clap and cheer. He was famous. Harry Houdini escaped so many things in this life. 
Harry Houdini himself, he didn't believe in fortune tellers. He didn't believe that you could talk to people beyond the grave. But he did make this pact with his wife, Bess. Her name was Bess. She, he said, Bess, if I'm able to communicate after I die, he said, whatever day I die, I will return to you every year on that date at 9 o'clock. He died on October the 31st. Is anybody hearing me preach? He died on October the 20 or October the 31st on Amen Halloween. Amen. Are you hearing me? And Bess waited at next year to hear from Houdini. She got together and got together to see if he is going to show her something from the grave. They said 10 years, Bess got together with fortune tellers and people that were supposed to hear from the grave, hoping to hear from Harry Houdini. Ten years later, Bess gave up. She still hasn't heard from Harry Houdini. She never heard from him. You want to know why? There's a great gulf fixed. Once you get there, there's no coming back. There's no returning. Today I was standing down here at this, right past the office and one of the boys said to me, Pastor Greg, your son just went down the steps toward the waterfall. So my young men took off running and ran down them steps. And by the time I could get there, they were done at the bottom. And I hollered and James hollered and said, do you see him? They said, he ain't down here. And I'm telling you for a split second or two, my heart dropped. Because they said, we just saw him go down them steps a few minutes ago. But daddy was running with everything. Was I could run or get in there as fast as I could. Them boy, my boys were done running down there. And then here he come from the gate down yonder. Hallelujah. I could have tried to rescue him. But I'm telling you, there's a great goal fixed. That not even God himself can reach you. I want you to listen to me. There's a tombstone read this. Consider, young man, as you walk by and as you are now, so once was I as I am now. You soon shall be, so prepare, young man, to follow me. That sounded, is anybody hearing me? That sounded pretty profound, but someone took a knife on that tombstone and scratched the response on the tombstone that read, To follow you is not my intent until I know which way you went. The Bible tells us everything we see around us is temporary. It's what we don't see that lasts forever. One day your heart's going to stop. That's going to be the end of your body. But it's certainly not going to be the end of your soul. And that cute, good-looking boy that's got your attention this week, young lady. Ain't worth dying and going to hell. Keeping you from selling out, keeping you from praying, keeping you from seeking God, keeping you from giving all. Young boy, she ain't hot enough to cause you not to sell out this week to God. They ain't a girl in this building pretty enough. Ain't a girl in this building hot enough to cause you to get so distracted that you don't get what you need in this camp meeting. This life we live is a warm-up act. It's the preschool. It's the first lap around the racetrack. The first page of the book that goes on forever. The Bible teaches this, and here's where we're going to preach for the next few moments. I want you to hear me concerning hell. The reality of it. Everybody say this with me. It is real. Hallelujah. C.S. Lewis was told of a gravestone inscription. I got that Jordan back there somewhere, baby. Amen. Told on the gravestone the inscription, Here lies an atheist, 
all dressed up and nowhere to go. Lewis Clotley replied, I bet he wishes that was so. It's a real place. The story's told of an old armly chaplain that came. Amen. To take over. Amen. And be a chaplain in the army. Upon his arrival, they asked him the question. The military boys, the soldiers did. Do you believe in a literal hell? He replied that he did not. The men asked him to resign. He asked, why do you want me to resign? Their response was, if there's no hell, then 